the Secretary General of the African Research Universities Alliance, Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Vice Chancellors of Sister African Universities and beyond, the Secretary General of the Association of African Universities, the keynote speaker, Provost Dean's directors, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I speak here on behalf of the President of the Republic. It is my pleasure to address you at this launch conference of Arua here in Accra. And on behalf of the government and people of Ghana, I welcome our distinguished professors, lecturers, and researchers from various parts of the world to this country. We've come to Ghana at a time Ghana has accomplished a smooth political transition process and has quietly settled into a new era of hope and high expectations. High expectations about national development, high expectations for a vibrant economy. But as you are all aware, no nation can boast of sustained development without considerable investment in its human capital. Indeed, that is what all universities seek to accomplish. Constructing knowledge to train middle to high level human capital that will be at the pivot of Africa's development. I therefore feel proud to be associated with today's gathering which seeks to focus on strategies by which Africa's intellectual capital can be enriched through research. And I commend Arua for this exemplary initiative of pulling together the research capacities, strengths, and visions of leading African universities in the name of Africa's development and beyond. In unity lies strength, and uniting energies and resources in an era of resource constraints is clearly the best way of coping and thriving in a highly competitive global arena. It is lamentable that the issue of research and knowledge construction is one of Africa's weakest points. And this can be gleaned from several empty slots observed in various global databases within the Human Development Index and the African countries. In a continent that is often perceived as war-torn and wrapped in poverty and illiteracy, one would need considerable research skills and output to diagnose Africa's development challenges and prescribe solutions towards a brighter future. Research in Africa only accounts for 1% of the world's research output. Even so, most of such research efforts can be traced to South Africa. Our relatively negligible research output can be partly traced to a certain level of inertia towards research by governments and other stakeholders here in Africa. Whereas countries like South Korea spend 3.74% of their GDP, and Israel 4.2% of GDP on research, most African countries spend less than 0.5% on research, even while the benchmark recommended by AU is 1% of GDP. It is not surprising that there is a perception of huge disparities in quality between universities in Africa on one hand and those in other parts of the world. Even though the worldwide rankings are not necessarily the most reliable in measuring academic standards. The geographical distribution of universities in the top, middle, and bottom brackets in most world rankings of universities should give one a sense of considerable inequality between universities in Africa and the rest of the world. Within Africa itself, there is a sharp schism in perceived standards between universities in South Africa and North Africa on one hand and those in the typical sub-Saharan Africa described as north of the Limpopo River. The latter are poorly perceived in terms of infrastructure, 
human resources and academic output. But the grim situation also indexes differential levels of participation in higher education. While the higher education participation rates in many high income countries are well over 50%, in Sub Saharan Africa, they are in most cases below 5%. The low level of participation in tertiary education should naturally have adverse effects on development, for there is increasing evidence that high levels of education in general, and of higher education in particular, are essential for the design and optimum uses of new and innovative technologies, as well as the development of civil society. Where research has been prosecuted for planning purposes in Africa, one often laments defective and unreliable databases that cannot be utilized for any meaningful planning and sustainable development. Issues of inaccurate statistics and lack of analytical tools have been the bane of research in Africa and have posed major problems for planning. Ladies and gentlemen, the world today is moving at a remarkably fast pace in areas like technology, health, food security, energy, water conservation, mobility and migration, revolutionary changes are taking place from day to day. The ultimate goal is to improve the quality of human life and increase our life expectancy. Indeed, the quality of life has changed dramatically over the past few decades in almost every imaginable way. These changes could not have been possible without research and innovation. In Africa, the need to invest in research is even more imperative. As a continent, we lag behind the rest of the world in many aspects of the Human Development Index. Too many of our people lack access to potable water, basic health care, and education. We cannot continue this way, and we might not continue this way. The only way we can forge ahead to improve the lives of our people is for government to invest heavily in research. We cannot continue to be only consumers of research from other parts of the world, and neither can we rely perpetually on research findings about ourselves from research scientists who have limited knowledge and understanding of the local terrain. Sustainable solutions in Africa should come from Africa and from Africans themselves. But before meaningful solutions can be found, we need to resolve the perennial issue of a lack of convergence between research and policy. Indeed, the disconnect between research findings and policy is a malaise that needs to be cured. While findings of research sit on dusty shelves of universities and research institutes, policymakers operate either within or with zero data or group in darkness for evidence-based research which could otherwise drive policy and move the continent forward. Ladies and gentlemen, we must work hard to bring this to an end. And I urge fellow African governments to rise to this challenge and recognize research as central to our growth and development. I believe in the potential of this continent, blessed with abundant resources, both human and natural. We have no excuse to be in our present dire circumstances. I have always insisted that God did not put us on this continent to be poor. It is bad leadership that has been the bane of Africa. We need a renaissance at all levels of leadership to elevate Africa to its deserved place in the Committee of Nations. And this is why I'm particularly pleased that we have shown true leadership by coming together as African universities to harness your respective research energies for the ultimate good of the continent. I hope that in other aspects of human endeavor, African institutions and governments will continue to find common ground to bring growth, development, and stability to our people. We all have a role to play in pursuing these noble goals. I am glad universities represented here today are highly rated research universities in Africa. But I trust that best practices noted at your meeting here in Ghana 
will not circulate among yourselves only, but will be shared among all universities and research institutions in Africa. I trust that you will have fruitful deliberations during this conference and that as an alliance, this organization will grow from strength to strength. I wish you a warm and pleasant stay and I can assure you of the legendary Ghanaian hospitality everywhere you go. And on this note, allow me to formally declare open this maiden conference of the African Research Universities Alliance. Thank you very much.